with a Silver Edge. Projectiles are very slow. Even a Manta style could evade it on the face of Void, so... Conflict strong against face of Void to begin with, but not... ...against the Darkos people. If you to go away with your stats. I'm going to use where it's giving. Like, Margo literally stole where Nice, but uh, that pushes the lane for them. But it also helps you, or it also takes a lot of experience on Arna. And that's fine, you know, they take an experience and one other screen. I do think the Ogre Magic might want to. Honestly, a kill with an Ogre Magic and a Marana, which. Over three should be. And so I'm killing this top lane, find the axe, axe will get the last spin, and we'll kill him off, but MTR will also die to proxy. The first blood goes to power gaming in a dual lane against a solo lane. Not particularly good fungals, but again, it's not just the first blood. And we do see the empower build coming out for retribution with a level one skewer. Okay. And Masquerade is leading a pretty nice lane. The whole dual lane's idea by Mongol is quite fantastic. And the whole dual lane's idea by Mongol is quite smart. Because they take advantage of the Oracle, they're up against an axe, which is particularly weak against an Oracle, so... I mean, he does counter the... Because of the Fear Fight Flame, deals too much damage. Okay, now with the Ignite, has enough time off to 10 seconds, that's too aggressive. Uh, actually, no, it's, it's just level 3 Void. What can you do as level 3 Void? Went and played a bit too aggressively, and then... High cool that I'm... What happens when you use an offensive Void Block? Or not Void Block. Void block. <laughs> EZ almost caught out. Three or five flames to finish. Finish off. Skewer coming in. EZ has to fight retribution to head on. That retribution has to come to Star Storm as well. They want to show this Magnus and they will accomplish it. AYC at least getting the counter kill, the revenge kill. Not that bad. Could have been worse, honestly. And in that situation, I think. And the Rubik plus arrow is a pretty nice combo. You can telekinesis them into arrow and it's. Well, but in this. I, mean, I don't think they're gonna find the Slark really easily. He's. Oh, Slark is very unaware here. He... Oh, the Revenge is called. Yeah, he has to come in. And no Dark Fight can stop this, so Zanka is as good as dead. That arrow did hit it, by the way, and then the calling. But now they go on Jackal, though. They even use an RP. They commit everything to this. The Chrono's available, but they can keep morphing in the Chrono. The Rock Plus as well. But Jack somehow not going down. They commit the Chain Rocks. The ultimate, but it's worth. Full of water. Puddle of, of, of crap. And Slark died, and Arrow. Huge up cooldown. The RP is also pretty good to left. Uh, that was committed by the uh, power gaming team, really the Moonlight Shadow. So, they should force a team fight now, because they have barely any team Try to force a team fight. They have an Axe, and Axe is like a team fight ultimate equipment. Now go out to Sanke, what is Sanke doing? Okay, apparently just killing Mozart. I'm gonna leave him here to die. Bad positioning, and Yeah, here. Axe comes in, Axe grabs two, Proxy can go down first, Saki will also follow. Now with the extra movement speed boost, they're gonna go kill a Lich. Two. Oh, cross armor yourself, yes please. To two guys that deal mainly magical damage. Let's see how that's gonna work out for you. Up, oh, play. Oh, I've been to like an E. Killed by Cooling Blade? Almost like cross armor, that's insanity in this game. Oh. Meanwhile, I'm TR going for the retribution. Oh, what an arrow. What a great arrow by... Gonna stall now. They're perfectly changing these stuns, and they get another kill on Mongols here. Again. Allies. Hey, stop the abyssal blade on this. Don't give a shit because they have terrifying flames to stop it. So many ways to stop you. Like, the thing you're gonna block is me. Abyssal blade in a later game. At least they catch the masquerade out with a little bit of circle's call. They come in with a waveform and pulling blade there. I don't know if he was taunting, that was a mistake by the Dota, but look at RP though, catches three, and almost kills MTR, they kill him off in the end. Right, they died on the best of choice, now they start more. Sanke can start fighting in, not here by Sanke either, as he gets hit by the Marana pretty hard, and no ags on her. And healing up perfectly, so that's the uh, ultimate. And Proxy, gonna be beaten down by the Ogre, Rubik still wants to fight this, so kill Proxy. And now Sanke was trying to go on TC, DDC doesn't care, he made all his mana. Now they're finally going on the Lich, but the Ogre is the only thing being kited by that farmer, so at least I guess it's effective. DDZ now being targeted by Sanka. Sanka has no mana left though, and they could really utilize this efficiently. Hit him with an arrow. No. It's uh, quite a mistake of an arrow. There was. They want Seeky's keeping people up. And that's gonna help him out a bit in But. But. Yeah, Corona with a big dagger. I mean, it, it was useful, but at this point, if you do it, it rely on the Magnus Core. 
But Rudbeck does become powerful, and he might want to grab Ethel close to it actually. And I would grab the Ethel Lens over Arcane Boots. So useful, we Pretty well, up top, Sonic dead. The arrow, I, I believe the arrow hit. <laughs> He's gonna go down. Doing much masquerade now with the ignite, they're gonna hit him hard in the center. Also put down so they can defend the tower. But without the axe the initiation, they really need him. Is he gonna go in? Is the question. They go on him on proxy. Saved by the damage, for the damage with the power of. Oh no. Sentry's there. They know in the sentry. They stop MTR. There's the chrono plus the RP. The RP brings it right into the chrono. And now they're gonna kill one. The chief. Wow, but a bit too late. They do kill two though. And DDZ will be the last one to survive. Your stock is gonna down for the damage from the Oracle. And he should be alright, he should be completely healed now. The arrow comes down, does not hit Masquerade, completely misses Jackal, trying to destroy some parts of the enemy team. And now Mozoon is the target of aggression, they're gonna hit him twice. And Mongols destroying this poor Ochre Magi as DDZ blinks in, incredibly aggressively, and please punish that. Please! Gee! What? DDZ is okay. Tower instead. I'm surprised. I mean, he was doing a bit of creep skipping, that's fine, and he had a leap, so that's okay, but it should definitely punish him. There it is. He's now being punished finally. He has a leap, but he can't because there's a goddamn spark in the enemy team. You can't leap away from that. You have no way to discover. So, die. You leap, that was a terrible. 300. Around 375 physical damage. Then you have to add another 150, so that's actually like 250, right? So that's 525 more physical cool damage. Silver Edge, then you cut him out with a pound to Dark Pact. But you don't know if you can get them off if drop 460. Alright, 900 total damage. You don't consider armoring or not. And, uh, and full pop people. Put him in a pickle. Now the Corona on two more play, but they just want to stop the Masquerade. Almost died to the axe. That was not the best target to go against, I would say. But I do, they do kill two. I thought this is more now. Sonic going on to Jackal. Jackal tried to morph. They has to morph quickly, but the axe comes in, gets the counter kill. They will finish off this one. And the Corona of the Rubik took so well for this team. It actually kills off Proxy. Uh, now, what a perfect position by the, by the Proxy. Wow. Sorry, uh, JYC. Wow, what a Rubik. And up against an arc, like they're drafted, so. And putting all your eggs in one Sark basket is. Alright, it's not. Draft you up against, because Sark again, like I said, it's pretty well in the late game if you are heavily countered. If you are heavily countered. And though we see more of got in the late game, oh no, Mask Raid. Grab the Aegis, so you should be fine. They get him with a Battle Hunger, but uh. Now JYC, oh no, Battle Hunger on the. Uh, sorry, the. Caught from the Axe, they just put in Lich. The arrow barely hitting anything, Mongols now being healed, or Proxy now being healed, or DZ might go off the Proxy, has a Star Storm, will kill them off in the end, the E-Blade will even be committed. Dusk comes out, doesn't quite hit. That. Is that Chrono use? Like, isn't an issue on anything, but they don't, they do know the Lich is around there, which is... Trying to kill him. Now the mo Void might find the Morphling, but the Morphling might find the Void. Yo, we're getting really close to him, so the projectile speed doesn't really matter. But he did use a time walk. So this time you commit the evil down. And retribution does die to the evil, so I get that combo. They work out regardless. Killed off a poor retribution. Now they see Sanke, Battle Hunger onto him, has to bounce away, loses his invisibility. The Moonlight Shadow is up though, and Oracle comes in, but in the middle of the enemy team, maybe not the best of choices here, Proxy, I would have said, maybe. He is gonna have to go down. First to install himself for the first time. That was a terrible initiation. Oh, oh hey, there's five guys, let me join them! Which they commit like once. Force the core one of those items. And if you force the cooldown on the shadow dance, perfect. Force the cooldown on the E plays. Don't go on to this tower, the the armor is up too on the tower and Sanke wants to initiate, but he's gonna be caught out, Jackal could easily finish him off. That's what they wanted. The e blade to kill him off really quickly. And the waveform of defense for Miles does that. Now in the mid lane. Good job on Jackal and Eddie Hard now. Roxy or something. But he found that in that situation. Oh, no, my proxy is almost destroyed. Fancy is a combination. It'd be nicer if I could have seen it fully. And proxy is already saved with a four staff, but the cooling blade is there to kill it. 
play. The Chrono comes out though by the Void. He does deal the Chrono again. JYC has a prepared Chrono. And Bob keeps his shit dead again as the Titan Chrono comes out. And JYC even puts the Rubik back in it. Masquerade is not really fast. The Rubik Chrono, the GG will come out from Mongols. And it's by Power Gaming, they not even played to their strengths. Mongols, how does this not the best of that? Again, like it's I'm gonna try to copy the, the Warriors Gaming Draft. I love this So cool. Oh my god. Can I look at... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.